Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I am rising on behalf of my party to strongly oppose the government of the National Capital Territory of Delhi, Amendment Bill 2023. Let me make it clear at the outset that this bill is no ordinary piece of legislation. It represents a grave chapter in the history of the Indian Republic, seeking to ratify an ordinance that in many ways is an assault on our democratic heritage and the spirit of federalism. During the introduction of the bill itself, sir, I had filed a motion strongly opposing its very introduction in this House at a time when a motion of no confidence is pending for discussion. In fact, the Bhagavad Gita of Parliamentary Practice and Procedure, call in Shakhtar, page 772, explicitly states, when the leave of the House to the moving of a motion of no confidence has been granted, no substantive motion on policy matters is to be brought before the House by the government till the motion of no confidence is disposed of. Yes. Sir, in 27 no confidence motions brought since independence to this House, no bills were debated and passed before this government did so with two bills in 2018. Therefore, such an improper introduction of a substantive policy change while a no confidence motion is pending is against democratic morality, to use a word much favored by the Treasury benches. Let me remind my colleagues in this House that it was almost four years ago exactly when this government unceremoniously passed a bill that sealed the fate of a state government practically overnight in the rampant disregard for the basic constitutional relationship of the people of Jammu and Kashmir to the Republic of India without consulting them or their elected representatives, this government showcased the same attitude that we are seeing today. A breathtaking betrayal of our democratic political traditions, culture, and utter contempt for the people of the state and of the value of the political representation that these citizens of India give themselves through elections. Four years later, we're back in the House with a government that is clearly bringing the same attitude, same attitude to our national capital. We saw when the Home Minister spoke. Sir, I'm sorry, I'm not yielding. I'm not yielding. I'm not yielding. Sir, I'm not yielding. Sir, I'm not yielding. Sir, I'm not yielding. Please, please, listen. This is my right. Listen. No, no. It is yield or not? This is my right. It's ridiculous. Yes, sir. It is right of the House. If 52-1. Ji. If 52-1. अभी इन्होंने जम्मू कश्मीर के बारे में कहा सर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच सुप्रीम कोर्ट का उसको रोज सुन रहा है और उसके बारे में इन्होंने बिना कुछ कहे हुए अपना एक्सप्लेनेशन दे दिया सर आई expression that my friend Dhyanidhi Maran was quoting in Tamil was that the devil can quote scripture for his own purposes. The truth is that times change, sir. Times change and with that facts change as well. There were no elected representatives for Delhi in an assembly in those days, sir. We were talking about a different Delhi and we were talking about a different India. Today, 75 years have happened since independence, 76. In any case, I have to say to my dear friends in the treasury benches, you oppose everything Nehru said. You oppose everything Nehru stood for. So why not this one too? Oppose him saying that uh, opposing oppose him saying that Delhi should be under the central government. That will be the end of the conversation. They also went on about alliance politics. But let me stress, Mr. Chairman, this is not about alliance politics. This is about a principle, and the principle is that the democratic and federal republic of India finds a grave shadow cast upon it today, sir. The union of states, so original and aspirational in its genesis faces a crisis of the federal division of powers. We saw the Minister of State for External Affairs choosing to intervene on internal affairs. Fine, that's your party's prerogative. But the fact is that she asserted that India is not federal. She said it three times. Why then do we have a state list, a concurrent list, a union list? Because we are federal. I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm not yielding. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm responding to a debate to a point made in a debate, I have every right to do so, sir. Why does the government and the Prime Minister speak of cooperative federalism if she is right and we are not federal? Obviously, the government wants to have seen the virtues of cooperative federalism, but in stark contrast to that, we see the ruling party impinging upon the sovereign domain of the states from vacillating on GST dues and Munrega payments to states to bulldozing through laws and subjects from the state list. A blatant subversion of the constitutional separation of powers is taking place again today through this bill. 
The difference is at this time around, the Honorable Supreme Court was loud, clear, and unequivocal. And the government seems determined to ignore it. Let me set out before the House the three dangerous prongs of this amendment, sir. It removes services from the legislative competence of the Delhi Legislative Assembly. In other words, it amends the Constitution without being a, constituent assembly, uh, a constitutional amendment bill. Yes. Second, it establishes this National Capital Civil Services Authority, consisting, as everyone has pointed out, of the Chief Minister, Chief Secretary, Principal, Home Secretary. Now, the authority in which the elected CM can be outvoted by the other two can even convene on the basis of quorum of two. So even without the CM, the two officials can get together and decide anything they like, sir. They can make then recommendations to the Lieutenant Governor regarding transfers, postings, officials, of officials, disciplinary matters. And bureaucrats are going to henceforth exercise authority that voters have given to their elected public representatives. If BJP was in power in Delhi, sir, would they have accepted this? It seems a case of where you stand depends on where you sit. Now, third point, sir. The bill empowers the, the lieutenant governor to exercise his sole discretion on several matters, including those related to this uh, civil services, the summoning, prorogation, and dissolution of the Delhi Legislative Assembly. So this implies that the elected chief minister may even be unable to convene a session needed for essential government business. The LG can overrule him. Even a unanimous decision of this authority can be overruled by the LG. He can define the powers and duties of the officers of the Delhi government superseding the minister namaskar main hu manak gupta agar aapko hamara ye video pasand aaya ho to ise like aur share zarur kare aur ha hame subscribe aur follow karna na bhule taki aap desh aur duniya ki koi khabar miss na kare to jude rahiye hamare sath aur dekhte rahiye news 24